All righty. Doc here from North America. Oh, we got voices up there already. I like that. Uh, like the Santa. Oh, it's a Espanol or, or a Brazilian. That's what it is. Brazil. Good morning to you. Uh, the only thing we get, unfortunately, is we never seem to be able to get the real on here at all. Um, hey, Robin, how you doing? Uh, we do have the, what they do is they have this, uh, let me open it up. I, I can show you the one thing we do get from Brazil. Or, uh, yes, let me, uh, let's open that up and see right there. Is that it? Yeah, let's open it up there. There we go. It's a, um, it's a Brazilian fund, and I, and they, uh, I guess the car, the uh, products, by being long or short them, is is in a sense being owning the currency. Not counting obviously the equity risk at the same time, but um, let's see if we can find it. Right there. There it is. You can see it's just starting off a little flat. Um, I guess you might recognize the strength there when the currency went up and it's been moving back down again. Does that make any sense? And let me get the uh, translator going on this too so I can see what you said. Uh, we Like, uh, let's see. Um, let's see, right there. Copy. I did bookmark that translating device um, in trading. Let's see, where is it at? Stop orders, monos, and it search. I know I put it in here. Um, vendor, no, that's not it. There it is. We got it. Going to the translator now, and we'll see what that says. Where'd you go? Google Translator. Here it is. Okay, and let's. I think it was Portuguese. They don't say it any other way. See, so this is uh, Portuguese to English. Okay, there we go. Paste. Uh, number one from Santa and beautiful Katarina. Great. <laughs> Good morning to you. Uh, let's see, how do I do this? Uh, I guess I say. Uh, I guess I can copy that. Let's see. Grand. Of course, I should have recognized Grand. So let's copy that and replace some of that and see if this works. There you are. Oh, yeah, Bella. I recognize, you know, I actually recognize some of this. South NJ. There we are. <laughs> ah, 47, how you doing? Can we look at the Nikkei? Yeah, I, I, I saw it was down, uh, what was it? It was down like 2.5% or something like that. And some of the Asian markets were closed, I believe. Especially in China, I think. Let's take a look at the Nikkei. Uh, let's close this. But that's the Brazilian one right there. Just for the sake of uh, thinking about Brazil. And then um, right there. Here's the... Uh, there it is right there. You can see the cell. And it's, you know, it fell down. Uh, went into a cell on Friday. You can see that there. And was in a weekly buy for two weeks and now t t it's playing with the sell you know it's um it, it's an interesting thing to see to the nikkei move around the way it's moving um you know just following the world markets uh, you know there's not, no not much more than you can say about that you know i mean that's what they really are doing um you know watching the currency the way it has run matter of fact let's see what the let's see what the yen is doing too Right there, 
So they're perking it up a little bit. It's making a, a what? A, this is like a 20 year high right there again. You know, in other words, that was a 20 year high at 131.25. Now today's high is 131.34, basically 35. So, you know, it's just about what, what's that? That's uh, 15 pips almost. Is that 15 pips? Yeah, no, uh, 10 pips basically. A little under 10 pips. And now it's just sitting sideways and it's in a daily buy from Friday's close. So they're feeling, you know, you can see some of the pressure on the currencies again. Uh, what do I have up on J4X? Let's take a look and see. There we are. There's the yen there. So you can see that pressure that's, you know, they're moving towards dollars. Uh, the, was it the 30-year bond here in the States? Is uh, up to 320 or something like that now? I think it's a th the. Let me just take a look. Um, I saw that about an hour or two back. Um, where are you? We'll find you in a second. There we go. I'm not sure if it was the 10 year or the 30 year. It was that three? It was almost at 320. I'll tell you in a second here. Going over to my bond page. Uh, yeah, that was uh, the 30 year bond now is trading at 327. And the 10 year is trading at 315. A lot of pressure on these things. Um, I, I, you know, <laughs> you know I, I want to say something fundamental about it all, but I don't think I. You know, it doesn't really matter, does it, at this point? You know, I mean, it really, it's, uh, you know, the whole, you know, someone sent me something, one of the traders from the old days on the floor sent me something about three hours ago, and it said something like, uh, Putin will declare to be an occupying something or another, and, you know, force or something like that, and, and then uh, and said uh, he'll retire. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. I don't think there's a clear path. There's no clear path to anything. You should hear what's going on here in the States this morning. I mean, we're hearing all kinds of wild directions about, um, you know, Mr. Biden and the problems and so forth. I said, could you also look at GB? Oh, okay, sure. Let's take a look at that 47. Um, I mean, uh, gas is, uh, for the automobiles is moving up at, a, you know, at all time highs, uh, same thing with diesel fuel. It's over six dollars a gallon. A uh, lot of lot of pressure in every direction. I mean, every direction. Let's see GBP, JPY. There's Euro JP, uh, JPY. It's on here somewhere. There it is, right there. I think I looked at it a couple of days ago. Uh, let's see, it went into the buy there. Yeah, I could have sworn we marked it up. Went into the buy there. And then two days later, back into the cell again. And that's when I looked at it. So let's just fix that like that. And let's save that. Save workspace. And as you can see right there, we're minus four. You can see that right there. Can you see that? Yeah, we're minus four. Let's make that larger. Uh, and then we'll put it on. Let's put it on J4X first. I just want to see the GBP, JPY on that. Right there, you see the, you know, it's moving down with our work. You know, both both chart systems are telling us there's weakness there. Uh, we're getting, you can see, we're, oh, look at that. We're, oh, that was me. I was gonna say that. Look, did it start to turn white to green or something? You can see we're starting to get that right there, uh, and you can see it bigger there. And you can see we're just underneath it at the moment. We'll see, you know, on the weekly itself. And that was an interesting, you know, went into a weekly buy. It was all right, you know. I had that long run there. And in the middle of it, it went into the weekly buy. And then it did it again here. And had another long run to the top of there. I mean, because we had a red and green here when it went minus. So you still stayed long. And then you went into the sell here. Literally, at, at close, you know, a couple of days after the, the high. And uh, you know, kept you relatively safe. 
and then uh, you got into a buy here and it did nothing for you really and so it, there's a point where it uh, you know is uh, sloppy and and part of that 1.5 I think I mentioned that too was one there's that it's, you know we the math is usually 8.5 if not better out of 10 you know right around there 8.7 you know something like that um, Sometimes it gets to nine. It goes back down to eight point five, or you know, it rarely drops below the eight point five. I think it hangs around eight point four at worst. Um, and and then you can see here, you know, that's at one, that one and a half percent. Oh, no problem, forty-seven. No problem at all. Um, you know, we're 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 hearing stories this morning. You know, people were talking and and they're saying stuff like. Can we even trust the Federal Reserve and Powell? Is he competent enough that, you know, he's not, con there's, no, they're saying, not, they're, they are actually saying on live that there is no confidence in him. That's what they're saying. They're actually saying that and kind of like the horses left the barn type of attitude about it all. There's a real frustration out there that, uh, that the Federal Reserve has missed, um, everything and the uh, politicians you know they they go through the list you know uh what's his name uh, uh trump that's it donald trump inflation was one and a half percent and even with the uh the covid he was able to keep it relatively under control but then you know they they started trying to bail out the country at the same time and mr biden took over and he went from i guess under Trump, they did maybe a, a trillion and a half, and under Biden, they've tried to do, or they've done like a three or four trillion more, and uh, and that's that's what the problem is, is that uh, it's just way too much money, not enough people going back to work. Matter of fact, as much as Mr. Biden says what he says, that's probably why they they uh, made sure he uh, was the candidate too, because he will lie right to the TV set. You know, he'll lie right to the to the media and they love it they love that he does it and they don't they don't challenge him on it so i mean uh as i understand it we statistically we still haven't caught up to uh trump's january two, 2020 so in other words uh the workforce hasn't gotten back to normal since the COVID started so that's a I mean, there's so much crazy news this morning. Uh, you know, uh, people just kind of nervous and frustrated. And uh, you, you can see the stock markets are, you know, they're, they're not down that much, down 400 points. You know, to me, you know, four and 500 points is just an active day. That's an active day now, nowadays. It's not, um, it's not some death-defying thing. You know, the, you, you, can't, you can't call it a crash or anything like that. Not four or 500 points. I mean, uh, you know, just because in 1987 the market went down 500 points in a day, the thing was only trading at 1,700 or 1,900 or something like that. 1,900, not 19,000, 1,900. The thing's trading now at 33,000 or 32,000 and change, you know. So, I mean, you know, 500 points means nothing. To compare the two, it would have to be down 5,000 points, I guess you could say, really, right? Let's see. No, it's almost like... 10,000 points to compare 1987 crash to today's numbers we'd have to be down 10,000 10,000 at least at least down 10,000 no it's even more than that it's like 15,000 so I mean you know they you know when the media is clueless to reality you know we talked about this on am I the only person talking about pal painting the tape on Wednesday I mean in the old days, people would have, they would have been like blasting the Federal Reserve chair about that, painting the tape on a Wednesday, coming out with actual fresh new, uh, ma uh, you know, uh, information, knowing that he knew that information on Wednesday. I was mentioning that in the in the in the the, the, uh, Duke, uh, the uh, uh, YouTube uh, last week that. The Fed sees these numbers before the Bureau of Labor Statistics sees these numbers. And I'm repeating myself from Friday, but, you know, this morning, they're just all over them, like, you know, white on rice. They are just frustrated. People are really frustrated. Money managers are becoming frustrated. 
the, some of them are saying, you know, if you're really investing for the long term, uh, you know, like uh, uh, 18 months to, to like three years type of investing, you can you can average in now, you know, no problem. And that makes sense. But if you think that you're trading and getting aggressive, you know, that, then uh, then it becomes a, you know, a whole different game altogether. You know, you, you cannot. You know, think you're going to step in and so, oh, I know it was. He said uh, that that trader, that chairman of the exchange that texted me this morning said something like, uh, "The hell did he say?" Oh, yes, that was the other thing. He says, "Oh, and the market will bottom too at the same time." And that's what he said. <laughs> I remember just I just sent like a laugh out loud back, um, or maybe I did say, "There's no clear path." I think it was no clear path I sent him. Uh, but you know, in the end, uh, we're seeing some really strange stuff go on, and the currencies. Uh, you know, they're kind of calm, really, I guess you could say. And I'm always, you know, saying good stuff about the currencies, really, in the end. The currencies are a good trading tool. And uh, they, uh, you know, they, they're they probably the least of the radical uh, movement out of them. But then you gotta, you got to imagine, you got the Federal Reserve that's basically a, a, the buyer of last resort. It's not like, you know, pre pre two thousand eight, where it was the money managers and the institutions, and uh, the the market makers and so forth, they were the buyer of last resort. Now it's the Federal Reserve is the buyer of last resort. It's very weird because they they don't have to answer to anybody. They don't have any investors to answer to. They don't even answer to the politicians. Or let's put it this way: they seem to be owned by the politicians at this point. <laughs> uh, just saw something on the tape. Just everything just is catching me. All right, so let's get on to the currencies. Anybody wants to see anything? Just shout it out. We'll go after it. Let's take a look at the Swiss and see what the Swiss is looking like this morning. There's the Swiss. You can see they uh, made another high there. You can see it over on J4X. There you go. You see the same thing going on. You can see that green line turning up here uh, on J4X. You see that strength kicking out. Um, I guess, you know, we've talked about it over and over again. <clears throat> the dollar is being chased after for, you know, you know we, only, we can only really say we follow the math. You know, I mean, that's the best way of describing it. We follow the math. But, um, you know, it, you know when, you, when someone says why, you know, I mean, the only thing we can say is we follow the math because the fundamentals, you know, I mean, I don't think that, like I've said this over and over, the Swiss economy is not falling apart. So, you know, is it the uh, aggression going on in Europe? I mean, they, in the center of Europe, we have, uh, you know, fighting going on and talk of nuclear war. Is it that or is it just higher interest rates and inflation? You know, we've been saying all along that we thought it was just the higher interest rates and the inflation, um, you know pushing these products out of their trading range and 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 uh, after a couple of years in that trading range they've been pushed ag aggressively out of their range uh you know you're looking at highs that haven't been seen in years so you know the only thing we can really uh, uh suggest to you why it's happening is that that's about it but in the end we are very happy to always trust our math more than worry about what the fundamentals are and i guess you know when i say you know i turn on uh you know the the tapes and the news and everything i have going you know in the room here uh they're really looking at mr powell with a real angry face they uh they don't feel like he can he can do the job and he he still hasn't been confirmed by the senate either i don't know if that's going to change anything but um uh, you know at this point in time does it really matter? Is there, are they really going to bring in a Paul Volcker type that's going to... The, the Congress is not going to let that happen. Uh, they owe too much money. They can't let interest rates rise too much. I told you that I thought that they had it pretty much in there now. So now that we see three and a quarter versus three, no more than, <clears throat> no more than two days ago or two trading days ago, 
guess you know what we're going to do. We will see. You know, the the Fed is going to raise rates up into the threes. You know, we've been expecting that. Now the rest of the the market is starting to. You know, well, I think it's going to the three and a half four area. And so that would make sense that sense that they would discount uh, the bonds as a trader. They would discount the bonds until it actually happens, and then and then from there, you know, they'll just be basically sitting to the side. But they have to roll the bonds that they're in. You know, investors have to. I mean, when a bond matures, they have to roll them, and they, they're they're dollar cost averaging by rolling them. So that's where we are at the moment. Now that's a Swiss. And let's see what the bond. Uh, we can go look at the bond. <clears throat> let's take a quick look at the bond. Where is it at? Right, right there. So there's the. <clears throat> that's the thirty-year bond. And you can see it's just way, way down. It's been in a cell. It's been in a weekly cell for a while now. So that pressure is on there. Uh, let's see. As you can see, the weakness right there. So <clears throat> you can see that pressure that's kicking out on the uh, the J4X chart there, just the same as it is on the you know Chicago quant. There's pressure everywhere. All right, uh, let's get back to the currencies and take a look at the cable. Not the cable. I'm sorry, the uh, euro. We'll take a look at the euro first, and then go to the cable. And there's the euro. Um, it is flirting. You can see the math is trying to flirt down. Weekly's trying to press up, and you can see we are actually now we've we've uh, went down to where's the lows at today? Lows are uh, 104.95, and on Friday they were 104.83. So they didn't take out yesterday's low. They just went back. They chased after it. Right there. There it is on J4X. You know, the pressure is on the product. It's trying to top out a little bit. We're getting the same type of math kicking over here on the Chicago Quant. And you can see the product itself is trying to turn up, and we're getting a green dot, getting a little strength starting to kick out. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, that's the second largest. And that's another thing, too. We're going to, in this webinar, uh, in this uh, YouTube that we do, let's see who's contacting me here. Uh, in this YouTube, uh, we're going to remind people that Europe is the second largest economy in the world. It's not China. I don't know why they say these crazy things. <laughs> hmm. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that is that uh, is why, I guess, you know, we see a currency like the euro trade so actively. It is the second largest economy in the world. And if if China was really the second active, uh, the largest economy in the world, then it would uh, its currency would trade more than just two two and a half percent a day, whereas this thing trades in the twenties, twenty percent thou. So, you know, the euro is a twenty. The European Union is a twenty one trillion dollar economy. I don't know why no one seems to want to mention these things. I'm confused. You know, Doc is always this way at this point. He's always confused why these things go that way. You know, it's like, why do they hide simple facts? No way even 3% is impossible. They cannot service the debt. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. And 54 is saying, yeah, that's that was a conversation this morning. Trust me, uh, that was a big conversation. 3% is, is I, I saw the numbers. What is it? Um, they had this, I think they said that at at 4%, it'll be 9 at 4%, if interest rates go to 4%, I think they said it would be $900 billion, almost a trillion dollars of uh, interest paid a year. So they'd be paying almost a trillion dollars in interest. That's the other part of the QE. You know, the quantitative easing was to be able to allow them to uh, be able to service their debt. And, uh, now, you, know, you know, basically uh, in just two years, 
the national debt in the United States has gone up almost ten trillion. So <laughs> you're right. They're they're in deep trouble at this point. And I wonder what it must be very hard at the Federal Reserve to as they walk around and talk about all this stuff. You know, it, it's um, it it must be. You know, they 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 they've lost a lot of confidence. A lot of people have lost a lot of confidence in uh, the the Federal Reserve. I don't. I they've got nothing stopping them from just. I mean, beside inflation is literally the speed limit to them. Yeah, imagine that, a trillion dollars a year in service debt. Um, you know, the, the only thing slowing them down at this point on any level is the, the inflation. Literally, in other words, the politicians wouldn't do it. You know, for the last year and a half, they just cannot. You know, they spent an extra six or seven trillion. Um, you know, they, they cannot do anything. You know, Mr. Biden cannot do anything to slow the spending down um his people don't want it to happen and so i mean he talked about build back better again no more than like two days ago he talks about it all the time he wants five trillion dollars to spend more five million uh, five trillion more i mean it's like <laughs> not gonna happen the inflation is doing it now they're terrif the population here is terrified i tell people here that the dollars at all-time highs and people look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, you're kidding me. This is, reminds me of back in the uh, 2014 when I was telling people that uh, you know, Europe was trading bonds in the minus. And the United States does that off and on in the, in the short term, like the 30-day uh, and the 90-day sometimes goes minus. And they told me that you've got to be out of your mind. I said, well, no, no, no. <laughs> this is at a prestigious school in Princeton. Uh, you know, they were like, no, nah, no way. You know, so, you know, we are an island. This country is an island. It truly is. And the population pays no attention to the rest of the world to a great extent, unless they want to. You know I mean? In other words, only if it suits their their need to pay attention to them. So, in other words, uh, it's just, uh, it's very weird. So, anyway, let's see. That's the Euro. Let's see what's going on with cable this morning. Wonder if it's bouncing up also now. Yeah, doing the same thing. It's bouncing up. It's in a you know three days of a sell from here, but it hasn't really done much with that sell. And we've been in this weekly sell since here. So that was a, the first one was a really nice one. Went into a buy here, but we were in a weekly sell, so you didn't you, you know you just didn't get trapped by that move up. And then went back into the sell there on cable and. Uh, no, I guess we should put that down. So let's remove that. Oh, you know what we'll do is we'll extend it. That's what we'll do is we'll extend it like that so you can see it all. So you see it went into the cell there. It went down yesterday. It went down today. Now it's back up again. So good money management, you know, you're doing okay. Bad money management, you're taking it on the chin. And uh, if you if you want me to describe money management, we will gladly go through that. That could be a whole webinar in its own right, and I have no problem starting off right now about it. Robin and I talk about it all the time, and we're dealing with our clients. We're always telling them you gotta you gotta be more responsible. You just can't fight the math. And you can see there, there's the cable, and cable over here on J four X. You can see that there, you know. Definitely been finding ways to go down more than it does to go up. That's for sure. You can see it over here. Uh, can you see it over there? Yeah. If we scrunch uh, Chicago Quant up, you'll see. So we've basically been in the cell since January. You can see it there. There's January there. And we went into a weekly buy for what one week and then rolled right back over again. And you can see that there. They went went into the weekly sell. The week of uh, was that 135 ish, 136 almost in that area. And then uh, confirmed it, closed there, and it has found a way to go up and down, up and down. But more the low, making new lows, constantly making new lows on the uh, cable. 
So, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is only down 300 and some odd points. You know, I've seen it down 330. Now it's down 390. So nothing, you know. Please, docs, timely. Let's see, what's that? 54. 54 says, please do, doc. It is timely to. Oh, what? Money, ma uh, good money. Uh, what do we call it? Uh, good money management. What happens is that if you're, you know, using by like Dukascopy has binaries. Use binaries on some short-term trades instead of getting stopped out. Um, using options, you know, uh, marrying options to the spot trade. You know, in other words, you know, this way, you know, and using stop orders. If, if at worst, if you're not willing to utilize the options, use the stops or at the same time, reduce the size that you're using so you don't get stopped out so viciously. There's so many times I've heard people say they got stopped out and then the math keeps on going and they go, oh, and then if I'd only stayed in there longer and I didn't, I got stopped out, you know, I would have made the money. It's like, well, then obviously you're trading the wrong amount to your portfolio, you know, whatever money you're using. You're using, you're using too much of, of the equity. You know, because you're getting stopped out. So, in other words, if if you're t if you're risking, you know, uh, willing to risk, say, 40 pips, well, make sure you can afford to risk 40 pips and not get stopped out at the same time. You know, and that's what options do is utilizing options to marry them with your hard delta. You know, the uh, spot or the futures contract, whatever one you're using. On Dukascopy, it's the spot. You know, use options to balance it out. You know, uh, sell calls when you're possibly when sell a call against your long, things like that. Um, that's a, a sloppy way because that's basically you're still at risk on the downside, but at least it helps you a little bit more if you sell something with some value. Uh, buying calls and doing them into binary forms is usually the best. Uh, we've talked about it here. Some have asked we about gold. We I suggested uh, some trapezoid type things. You know, some. Basically, some type of binary concepts, you know, and uh, you know it's been positive, I'm sure, because gold is going down. Well, you can buy one call and sell another call and reduce your expenses, you know, and and that's that compensates for not being getting stopped out. And I hear you, and I understand that, and I agree with you, and there are ways to smooth that out. You can turn them into trapezoids and sell them even cheaper out. I think someone someone was asking me last week or the week before that how to get long gold. And I was like, you know, we're in a weekly sell. Let's put gold up there. Where I said, you know, we're in a weekly sell. And, uh, you know, it it's still in a daily sell. Look at that. It's been in a daily sell since, uh, since April 19th. It's in a weekly sell since, you know, the week by the end. Uh, yeah, by the 20th, confirming that week even. So to bottom fish and something like that, you know, I said, the only way you do that is you do it through like an option spread. So they put the option spread on and they, you know, they said something in the webinar and said, hey, we made some money out of that. And I was like, that's cool. But it's not the type of risk you want to take when we're in a weekly sell and a daily sell by being just long gold, unless you're buying it because you're going to hold on to it for the next, you know, three years or something like that. Oh, you did. It was you that did the trade. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I mean that's that's the uh, that's the only way to to I mean you that's not the only way, but there there are many different option and binary concepts that can be done that can be made cheaper, and you can make money out of it, and you won't get stopped out, and that's that's really the key to everything. Do you buy those call calling gold to three thousand dollars Oz? Uh. Do you buy those call, call, call like the call options, call gold, uh, cold gold options of three thousand? Uh, an ounce. I oh, I see dollars an ounce. Um, I, I always say that I always give you this. I give everybody the same answer all the time, and that is if you knocked me on my head and said, or you know, if someone would have asked me in two thousand eight. Federal Reserve now is going to be the buyer of last resort. Uh, you know, uh, Lloyd's of London is going to be go bankrupt, and um, Citibank is going bankrupt, and uh, Deutsche Bank is going bankrupt, and Santander is going bankrupt, and you know, uh, 
Bank of Scotland's going bankrupt, and Merrill Lynch is going bankrupt. And, I mean, if you'd have asked, if you'd have said to me those things are going to go bankrupt, you know, in the beginning of 2008, and then said, okay, now where do you think gold is going to be? I would have said, oh, you know, five, ten thousand dollars an ounce. I don't know, something like that. I would think that. That's that was my logic at the time, you know. Uh, what we learned is that it didn't it didn't happen at all, not even close. Uh, it ran up to two thousand. I guess it was uh, by a, was it uh, two in the year two thousand twelve or thirteen? I think. Let's go over to Dukascopy and look at it. Let's put a. Let's put a monthly in there. So, there's 2020. Yeah, 2011. We got up almost up to 2000. That's what it was. So, it got very close to it. Now, I thought it was 2012. But either way, you know, um, it made another run at it in 2012, too. Um that that to me was astonishing that that's all it did when when in fact all those things i just mentioned did go bankrupt and are have been bailed out by their their respective central banks um you know they're unwind you know they can't close them all because they have to unwind their their uh, spreads i mean can you imagine uh, the german economy is four and a half trillion dollars Right, the European Union is 21 trillion overall, but the Europe, you know, we'll use we'll use uh, Deutsche Bank as an example. Deutsche Bank uh, had 67 trillion dollars of investments on their books with swaps and so forth. Okay, 67 trillion. Citibank in the United States was the second biggest. They had 66 trillion in swaps. Okay, now. Imagine you're trying to unwind a position that it's $67 trillion big. What's slippage in that if you get the wrong trade? You know, in other words, you get the wrong uh, uh, purchase. I mean, half a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars mistake? The, the economy, the German economy is only $4 trillion plus. It's like $4.5 trillion. So, I mean, that would be, you know, just it would be devastating to their economy. So they had to bail them all out. That's what quantitative easing was all about. They had to do something because Mr. Bernanke at the time, yeah, it was Bernanke. Mr. Bernanke got his PhD literally on the, his PhD the thesis in economics was uh, what they could have done. Part of his thesis was that what have, could they have done in 1929 and 1930 on the Great Depression. So his uh, concept was to do a quantitative easing. He had writ written about it and uh, uh, and uh, actually was part of his graduate paper. So that's why we're there now. Now, when you have responsible politicians, you know it it's, it helps a lot. You know, look at like under Trump, he was you know he was they the 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 economy the debt was moving up, but it wasn't moving up anything aggressively. They were able to start paying off and unwind and they raised rates the federal reserve rate actually raised rates up to about two and a quarter percent under mr trump whereas for eight years under mr obama they, they raised it one quarter point once remember every quarter anybody here remember every quarter we were told that they were going to raise their, a quarter the media never complained whatsoever when they didn't do it they never said oh the politicians are stopping it they never said a word it was silence but the moment Mr. Trump won, he wasn't even sworn in. He still had two months to go to, to get sworn in. They raised the interest rate a quarter point right off. Boom. And then when, by the time he got sworn in, they raised it. They kept on raising it. Another quarter point and another quarter point. And they got it up to about uh, one and a half or one and three quarters, two, something like that. So, uh, you know, the, the, the politicians have really turned this thing into a, a disaster. And uh, and there's and Trump tried to clean it up, and that's why things played out. Mr. Trump won more votes 
than any other sitting president in history, and he'd lost the election. How does that work? He was winning the election up until midnight, and then somehow or another, after the polls were closed, somehow or another, voters came in with millions of votes for one candidate. They, they, we call it, in, in politics, we refer to, remember, I'm a political hack, too. Um, they call it, we call it bullet voting, like bullet, like one shot a bullet, because what they did is they voted for Biden, but they didn't, they didn't go down the ticket. They were so panicked to put the votes in illegally, uh, they had to, um, they had to do something, you know, they had to do something. So they actually didn't vote for the candidates down below, like mayors and governors and, you know, congressmen and things like that. They actually just bullet voted Biden. That was it. And there were no votes for Trump at two in the morning and three in the morning. There were no votes for him at all. All half a million votes, Biden. Two million votes here, Biden. So, um, you know, they, they can't take that economic push the way it goes. Yeah, that's a good point, Robin. I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, it's really hard to say where the metals complex is going to go solely because the Federal Reserve, you know, uh, it's they, they've got it all tangled up with the currencies. They, uh, you know, gold is, is locked. So, in other words, it's not a good tool. Like, look at Bitcoin this morning. You know, people were asking, you know, I guess they had the, uh, when they have that conference out in California, Milken, right? You know, the old, uh, 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 the guy that, in, that invented junk bonds, Michael Milken, uh, for Drexel Burnham and Lambert. Remember Drexel, Robin, the pink jackets? <laughs> and uh, they had salmon jackets on the trading floor. They put blondes in them. I figured that's one way to get your orders filled. You put a blonde in the middle of a crowd in a pink jacket, uh, and you'll get a you get dozens of guys willing to fill her order. So, um, so Milken had a lot of crypto people last week uh, speaking at his conference, and they were saying, you know, how does Bitcoin down like from seventy thousand this morning? It's trading at let's put it up on J Forex. It's it's trading at like uh, thirty two thousand today, something like that. So gold is having a hard time uh, establishing anything particular because, you know, the, the central banks don't want it to. I mean, that's pretty much the answer to it all. Where's it at? See that? It's a 32,945. And the high was like 69,000 right here. Right there, 69,000. And change almost seventy thousand. I think we saw the futures contract go to seventy because of the premium that's in it. But yeah, Robin, you're right. I mean, no one really can. That's why if you're going to put a gold position on, do it through binaries and options. It's a lot safer. Um, they don't. If they don't, you know, if the central banks don't want it to go up, it will not go up. Um, they will. You know, they. They. You know, the. The. Um, Central banks have such power, you know, now that they're the only buyer of last resort, they set the margin, basically. They tell corporations, especially especially the banks, the lenders, anybody who borrows from the Federal Reserve has to listen to the Federal Reserve. He doesn't, they just don't hand out money and, and, and go, oh, go ahead, you know, go buy a, buy a you know, a Maserati or something. They, they watch what you do with the money. And they say, okay, look, you you have to if you're lending money, you have to have X amount of reserves. You know, you have to have a certain amount of reserves. And if they lend you two billion dollars, uh, you know what here's one of the, the tricks that they do overnight, and that is that they lend overnight money for free to institutions and they don't call it back as long as they buy stocks with it or they buy the currencies that they want them to buy. As long as they're doing what the um, Federal Reserve wants, they get that money for free. Or they're paying like a stint or, you know, some ridiculous price for it overnight. I mean, incredibly low to the point where you can't go wrong. All you have to do is, you know, buy the product and sell a call. You know, do a buy right. And the next thing you know is you're, 
you know, you're there. So these these are very tough entities to fight against. That's why we we do quantitative math, you know, all the time. We've been doing it for four decades now. And so you know, it's the only uh, most trustworthy way compared to trying to use uh, fundamentals. And that is, uh, that's the whole game there. So we all look at gold. Every one of us in this room probably looks at gold on one level or another and thinks, how is it trading at 1800 <laughs> You know? How, how comes it not, you know, there's a, the, there's a war in the middle of Europe right now, and, and one of them is a nuclear power, and they're threatening to use nuclear weapons on the one that's not. How's gold only 1800 or, you know, in the 1800s? Let's put gold back up there. I mean, really, wasn't gold supposed to be, and cryptos, aren't they supposed to be the place to run and hide? <laughs> right? That's what they're supposed to be. Now, aren't they supposed to be, in, that's, here's another one, I'll throw this one at you. If, not, if you can discount that, what I just said, you know, just, we all discount it, okay? I'll discount it with you. What about the inflation? We're at 8.5% inflation right now. Some, the three day, the, not the three day, the three month average now is up to 10 so our inflation's up at ten percent now. How come gold is not taking out all time highs? You know, maybe it doesn't go to three thousand, but you know, hello, why is it not at all time highs? I mean, you know, who's holding that thing down? Robin buys the physical, and they have like a twenty and five thirty percent premium on them. So in other words, they're, the the physical is well beyond the market price. Dow Jones Industrial Average is only down 300 points now. See, I mean, the Fed can come in and buy stocks or lend, they'll lend money to institutions. They've already got on the phone and said, look, the market's down. We don't want it down. <clears throat> we want it to be mild. So they can just say, oh, you know, that money we lent you last night, keep it. That's what they'll do. They just say, keep it. And they, then uh, the fund says, well, what do I pay for it? Ah, uh, just keep it. We'll, t we'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> and then tomorrow comes and they go, keep it. I even understand that Citadel gets over, what is it, uh, over a billion or two billion dollars overnight for free. I understand there's a lot of funds. I knew somebody inside Citadel. One of my uh, uh, ex-partners from the old days joined Citadel. He's, uh, I'm not sure if he's not a partner. Actually, I think he's left it now. But you know he, you know he just they just started something in Miami, um, an exchange. They created a they're a, mar, a market making exchange. But um, you know that's how this, the whole system works, and it's definitely you know it blows a lot of people's minds. And we here we talk about it. <clears throat> you can't. You're not going to hear this on Bloomberg. You're not going to hear it on. You you might hear a whisper on um, on. Uh, uh, was it CNBC? You know, uh, uh, you know, you might see it on there. You might, someone might actually say something like this. They usually cut them off after. They, what happens most of the time? What they do is they they just thank them after they after someone went on. They first of all they wouldn't let me ramble that long on there to begin with. But when someone actually says something about the Fed and money, they let them talk for about ten fifteen seconds. And then they thank them, and they don't ask any questions whatsoever. And then they go on to another person, and that's that's how it is. And so we, you know, that's why I'm at Dukascopy. I mean, I can say this stuff at Dukascopy, and they don't they don't cut me off. They don't say no, you can't talk about the markets. <laughs> and then we back it up with math, you know, real math, a chart, you know. I mean, you know, people, you know, are not going to get on Bloomberg and go, well, geez, ten percent inflation. How come gold, you know, if someone dares to say, how come gold isn't trading at 3,000, you know, they, they, will, uh, they won't put them on the TV to begin with. If they know that, they already know what these people are saying. So the people who say stuff like me, they ask them a few questions, put them on for 10 seconds, and it's gone. Then they can say, they can act like as if it meant something. All right. Uh, where do we go from here? I guess we've resolved the... Uh, question about gold on some level or another or I just went out onto the twilight zone one or the other um, we left the yen I guess let's take a look at and we saw the cable let's take a look at um, we saw Bitcoin that's kind of interesting let's go over and take a look at um, was it uh, 
Canadian. Let's take a look at the Canadian. And I think we'll, we'll jump to the Turkish Lira. T uh, normally, we go to Turkish Lira. Let's see what Turkish Lira is doing. They put out that, like I said, they put that hit piece out on that one last week. And I was really surprised. I mean, I, I kind of think that they're doing some responsible stuff there. Well, it looks like it's moving up. Well, oh, that's a monthly. Uh, the uh, the inflation is in the 70 percentile now there. I think it's sta it's uh, stalled. There you go. So you see there, um, you know, they're not taking out these highs or doing anything like that. They are taking out, you know, two week, uh, not even two week highs, you know, weekly highs. That's about it. I mean, you can see the pressure on it. It's moving up. Let's see what it looks like over here. There it is. You can see it's been in the daily buy for a bunch of days. Just like uh, J4X here. You see the three days in the buy. The green line's been through for like six days. And it went green and it went red and then, you know now we're green again. Over here we're two, three, four, five, six. We're six days in the buy there too. But our weekly is still showing pressure on it. So I'm not too confident that it's going to go back to the top end of the range. All right, from there, let's do the Canadian now. And Canadian is now at the top end of its range again. So there's, you know, you can see that that pressure's on it. Um, green line cut through. Uh, what is it over here? We, we're just a second day in a buy there, like the way uh, J4X is doing. That's today, I guess. So we're just a day ahead of it at the moment. I could have sworn I put these lines in last week. Let's try saving them again. All right, yeah, and you can see it's in the weekly buy since back here. So that pressure is on. And it doesn't seem to want to quit, you know? And it just keeps on pushing it. And that's pretty much the way the markets have been. They just keep on pushing. They just won't let go. Um, what else do we got going on here? So from there, we always look at gold and oil. So in other words, when we see Canadian moving up, like you see it in the J4X there and on Chicago Quant, we automatically go over to the oil market and the metals market. We've already looked at the metals. So let's look at the oil market. Last I saw it was down. Yeah. You see that pressure on it. It's actually trying to get into a daily sell after being in the buy from here. And we've been in the weekly buy since back in here. So it basically made a high, came down back up again this protected you somewhat <laughs> that was a pretty tough lay so can't win them all traders and we we profess to that all the time we just take it in stride um but we win more than we lose and that's always nice um oil i guess i i don't know why oil is going down i guess uh oh I, you know i did hear the rig count that's what i i did hear that the rig count you know the uh their biden's blocking production in the united states but offshore the companies have exploded in in the rig count the the where they you know drill outside the united states so they're they're the production is starting to ramp up they're starting to see some you know movement and that could be the whole process out of it all that would make sense Let's see what Brenton's doing. 
There's Brent. Still looking a little firm in there, but I think it's down. Even with it, you know, it's, yeah, you can see it there. It's down 304. So the work is going to start to turn. Yeah, see the green line is starting to turn. We get red, there'll be more pressure, and it'll start to find a way to go down. All right, traders, we are going to get going. We're going to go back to trading. <laughs> so everybody have a safe and smart trading day. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. Later, later, traders. Be safe, be smart.